We have a great show this week on the Medical Center Show. This week we have Dr. Michelle Reisner, who is the Director of Geriatrics, Palliative Care, and Hospice at Jersey City Medical Center. We have lots to talk about, and we'll be right back. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Seeing the ER doctor at the Jersey City Medical Center has never been easier. If you're sick, you just click. Go to LibertyHealth.org, and here's how it works. Click Skip the Wait. Select your time and check in now. Enter your symptoms, your personal information. Click Proceed to Confirmation, and the doctor's waiting for you. The Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Jersey City Medical Center consistently receives the highest hospital ranking and rating in New Jersey. Number one overall hospital in the state. Number one for high-risk pregnancy. Number one for neurological disorders. Number one for stroke. Magnet Award for Nursing Excellence. A for Hospital Safety. What makes the Jersey City Medical Center the number one hospital in the state? Top-rated, award-winning medical professionals. You can see today at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make the number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. Michelle Reisner, the Medical Director for Geriatrics, Hospice, and Palliative Care. Dr. Reisner, so good to have you Thank here you. today. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you did your residency at Jersey City, right? I did my residency when I came from South Africa. I did at my the residency. Medical Center, really? Yep. Wow, wow. So how, I mean, how many... How many, many years? No, not how many mm -hmm. years ago. I want to how, tell us a little about your training here at the medical center. Uh, I love Hudson County. I you love do. the patients. Um, I have the most wonderful patient population. I've been here for many years, as you know. Right. I'm a geriatrician. Right. And it's been a great honor and privilege to see the patients age. Uh, we've aged together. Wow. We, uh, so some patients you've started with when they were younger, and much now they're younger, and, and now, now they're. they're all, they're all still your patients. All my patients. And now you have an office on Jewett Avenue? I do. Okay. I have an office on Jewett Avenue. I also have, um, as my patients have aged, I found it more and more difficult for them to get into the office. Okay. And so I do have a cadre of nurse practitioners wow. who, because it's very difficult, as you know, when a patient has a multiple medical comorbidities to get to the office. And so I have nurse practitioners who do house calls. Wow. Good old fashioned house calls and they see each patient at least once a month. Mm -hmm. They provide excellent primary care. They review the medications. They uh, make sure that the home services are in place, make sure that everything's okay in the home. So talk us a little bit about nurse practitioners because I think some people get confused as to their new role and kind of how much they really can help a physician. They really act as an right. extension of you, right? I have worked with nurse practitioners for many years. I have. I have hired nurse practitioners and had, had, the, had the privilege of working with nurse practitioners right. for years. Um, I uh, hired uh, my first nurse practitioner in 2004 mm -hmm. to start taking care of some of my homebound frail elderly who were falling through the cracks. Okay. And she was a visiting home nurse and had just taken her nurse practitioner boards. And so we sort of started the joint venture together. Wow. And we have uh, a few hundred patients at the moment, all of whom she and a number of others take care of. Um, nurse practitioners are physician extenders, they really are uh, sort of a great help, especially in primary care. Right. She does the primary care for the, for the patients. She has a and relationship with the patients. she actually goes out patient. to their home. 
She goes into their home. Wow. She orders their medication. She, she orders visiting home nurse or the physical therapy or right. the home care or whatever the patient may need. Right. She can prescribe narcotics. Okay. If the patient is not doing well, she'll, we case conference on all the patients. Okay. She'll call me and if they need to go into the hospital, we admit them to Jersey City and mm -hmm. then as soon as they discharge, they go back into the home and she'll go and see them within 72 hours. Wow. So, we so that's really to a terrific service care. for people who may be homebound or just have right. a hard time getting around, right? Exactly. So patients who are homebound, frail and elderly, right. or not even uh, elderly, but if they, we have a number of uh, multiple sclerosis patients, ALS patients right. who just cannot get out of their homes. It's wow. just too difficult. And to get out of their home to go into an office requires uh, a time from the extended family, sure. they have to pay for an ambulance, to sit in an office for hours, just right. doesn't work. Doesn't so, work. Just, no. so you go to them? We that makes them. it more convenient and we that's, and I know it's a great service because I hear many of the patients who just love having those nurse practitioners or you even go to Thank their you. home and, and take yeah. care of them. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about geriatrics. So, you know, my mom's 93, people are living longer. Um, what are some of the common things that you see in patients? You know, what, right. what would you say would be the biggest thing that you probably see in your practice? Well, you have to remember, Joe, that the fastest growing segment of the United States population is 85 plus. Wow. And so 85 plus is the fastest growing segment of the United States population. You have this huge expansion of baby boomers. Every right. eight seconds, I mean, 65,000 of them are turning yeah. 65, you sure. know, 65, and it's a huge, big growth of the baby boomers. The biggest risk factor for Alzheimer's is age. Wow. And so, as patients are reaching, and as people are reaching age 85, their biggest fear, and, and quite rightly, is Alzheimer's dementia. Yeah. And, um, and so I would say the biggest thing we sort of deal with is memory loss. Yeah. That's a huge, big problem. In it's geriatrics. amazing you say that, because here's my mom, 93. If I go visit her, and I call her on my way home, she'll say, when are you coming to visit? She lost her short-term short -term memory, yeah. right? That's classic of Alzheimer's dementia. Yeah. That's classic. Yeah. And those are the things we deal with. And it's not just the patient. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with a patient with a diagnosis of Alzheimer's dementia, you need to really uh, get involved with the family. It's, you know, geriatrics right. is a holistic approach to primary care. Sure. So we look at the whole family. And when you're dealing with an issue like dementia, you really want to let the family know what's ahead. Right. You want to do some advanced care planning. You want to make sure that their affairs are in order. Right. And um, you want to sort of let them age in place rather sure. than, you know, you have to discuss all these issues, nursing home, home. So this is really awesome. You know, I, I saw a sign, um, I think it was in New York City or along the, the turnpike that said, the a person who's going to live to 150 years was just born today. <laughs> that just so they're talking that's about, yeah. you know, so people living to 150. I well, mean, that's the wow, people that's are definitely. Amazing. I mean, if a person reaches age 85, chances are they're going to, you know, a, a significant number of them are going to go into their 90s. Right. And as you know, with your mom, it's great, but yeah. you want them to be, you don't, you want it to be a quality of life issue. Right. You don't want it just to be a quantity of life. And that's so right. you really want the quality. You want them to be go, able to go out and to socialize and right. to keep active as much as they can. And certainly when they go home, most patients want to be at home. They don't want to be in nursing homes. Right or hospitals for that matter. Sure. They just want to be at home, which is why the nurse practitioner visits are so helpful. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You've got somebody who's in their 85 or 90 years old, can't get out of the house, at least you can go to them we and then not them. have them get to a point where they're falling in assisted through the living. Cracks. Yeah. Or they fall, you know, what happens when they don't have that, they fall through the cracks, right. then they come into the emergency room and there's just so many issues that haven't been addressed. Yeah. Now you talk about family involvement. Mm -hmm. it's so important with, you know, an elderly person you know, we kind of get to be the sandwich generation. We're taking right. care of their mom, we're our moms, and we're taking care of our kids. Right. How, how do you help the families cope with uh, uh, a lot of it's that? It's a huge problem, and so that's where it's very helpful to have, for instance, a visiting home nurse in addition to the nurse right. practitioner. It's very helpful to have a homemaker. Sure. It's very helpful to send patients if they can go to an adult daycare for a few hours a day oh, and that's socialize. A great idea. Sure. I mean, patients who socialize and sort of keep active have a much better um, sort of life expectancy and a much better quality of life. Right. And sort of, you know, depression is another big problem that we deal with. So, do you help the family kind of figure that yes. piece of it out? That's I mean, because that's that's it's tough, huge. right? It's tough. It's tough. And so to we give them options, that. and we need to help. That's why it's. It's not just looking at the patient and, you know, his cardiac status. Right. It's a matter of looking at the whole holistic 
patient as well as his psychosocial and family dynamics and we wow. really have to get involved with the wow. entire and you family. really are, have been an expert at this for so long. We've been doing it for a number of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're our, you're our resident expert at the Medical Center on Geriatrics and really helping patients and their families cope with really some of the problems that they have as they get older. Uh, we'll be right back and uh, more with Dr. Reisner. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital as ranked by U.S. News and World Report. Hudson County's only hospital to receive an A safety score rating. Jersey City Medical Center is Hudson County's only hospital to receive the prestigious Magnet Award for Nursing Excellence. Make the number one hospital in Hudson County your first choice for quality health care. Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital as ranked by the U.S. News and World Report. Why? Because of its patient care, not its bottom line. Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. The Jersey City Medical Center accepts all patients and most insurance. At the Jersey City Medical Center, your health is our concern, not our bottom line. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org. Welcome back to the Medical Center Show. We're here with Dr. Michelle Reisner. Dr. Reisner is one of our great physicians at the Medical Center. We talked a little bit about her directorship and her care of patients, uh, geriatric patients. The other thing that Dr. Reisner does is she's also our director of palliative care and hospice. So Dr. Reisner, that's, that's a tough, tough thing that you deal with, with hospice and palliative care. Tell us a little bit about palliative care and what that really means for families and, and people who might need palliative care. Okay, um, of course, uh, palliative care really is uh, em embracing a patient who has uh, not only uh, their actual d disease but also their symptoms and again it's a holistic approach to a patient. Okay. There's a great need for palliative care. There was a study that was done in the New England Journal of Medicine in August of 2010, which clearly showed at Harvard, patients who had lung cancer, right. who had usual treatment, in other words, chemo, versus patients who had usual treatment, chemo, with a palliative care consult, those patients who had both, right. palliative care and chemo, lived longer, better survival, and improved death. So what does that all mean? So, so just so people understand, to palliate means to help relieve pain? To help relieve pain, symptom control. Okay. People have the misunderstanding that palliative care is only end-of-life care. That's not, not true. Right, right, right. Palliative care is for anybody who sure. has a, a serious medical illness. Usually chronic diseases? Chronic diseases definitely fits into it. However, okay. you can have a, a young patient who has a lymphoma, right. comes to the hospital, gets uh, worked up, it should right. still get palliative care consult to make sure that symptom control is, is controlled. The Again, it's a holistic approach. The family is aware of all their disease, the disease process. Right. I mean, we always want patients who get a palliative care consult to live on and to succeed right. and be cured, and that's great. You sure. can be undergoing curative treatment right. and still get a palliative care consult. I think that's where the confusion is, Joe, because people think palliative care, oh, that's hospice. That's right. not it's correct. It's not hospice. No. It's somehow it's not hospice. The, it's two, the two things got, got confused. Well, because it's palliative care and hospice, but it's palliative care, which is a separate entity. Right. It has now become a, a recognized subspecialty as of 2012 by the American Board of Internal wow. Medicine. How about that? And so um, hospitals are ranked, as you know, and most of them that are ranked highly all have palliative care programs. Right. Now, we've Great had our palliative pro program for quite some time Yes, now. we have. We and have. we have a whole host of staff at the hospital right. that work on We have care. to have a team approach. Like okay. everything else in, in sort of this arena, physician alone is not enough. You need right. the physician, the nurse practitioner. We have pharmacists. We have social workers who right. are great. We have a chaplain. It's really a holistic approach to a patient with a serious medical illness because there are so many issues that somebody who's been diagnosed with a serious illness has to face that they need a whole team of so, people. So helping. it's not just the physical symptoms you're treating, yeah. you're really treating exactly. the emotional issues emotional that go along with issues, having that kind of depression, sure. family questions. Wow. 
families have to be told what's going on, uh, pain issues, symptom right. control, and the psychosocial issues, right. which is why you really do need the the nurse practitioner who has time to talk to families, give them their options. Many patients don't know about their options when they're given a diagnosis. Right. They need to know the, their options of care. So what is your approach? I mean, so you've got a patient, you know, in the hospital, and you see kind of a more, or maybe when another doctor says this patient needs help with coping with their symptoms right. and, and palliative care. How do you go about trying to kind of figure out is this a social issue, a, you know, psycholo psychological issue, a pain management issue? I, I think mean, there's one word to say, and that's communicating. Yeah, right. I think I'm there's a lack of communication, sure. right? Sure. So really, we talk to patients. You do. So you need to ask them about their pain, because that's a huge issue. Most right. patients, unfortunately, still are in pain, not getting enough pain medications. Right. We talk to them about any other symptoms they may have. Wow. We talk to them about their fears and right. their worries and who do they want to tell and who knows about their diagnosis. Sure. And then we ask them if we can do a family meeting. Yeah. I mean, that's what palliative care is. We want to help patients cope and deal with their illness. Wow. And by doing so, you really improve their quality of life. Right. And that's what palliative care is. Do all patients who get a palliative care consult go into hospice? No, you no, hope no, no, not. Of course but not, right. In the trajectory, if patients don't do well down the road and they no longer get in curative treatment, then we can start talking about hospice. Right. But there are many, many patients that you could treat in palliative care for many years, right? For many years. Yeah. You hope so. And what, and what kind of diagnosis do you, do you typically see? I well, mean, I know there's a whole range. There's but a whole range. We actually start our palliative care program. Uh, we started it at Jersey City many years ago, mm -hmm. as you know, with your right. support. Thank Absolutely. you. <laughs> <laughs> and support and support and support right. and we've started in the in the ICU right because where's the patient is the sickest in the ICU sure. and so we have our Nancy Payne our nurse practitioner right. and others and our social worker in the ICU to help those patients who are critically ill right that's a good place to start is that the only place for palliative care absolutely not should it be given in nursing homes yeah. well sure in the emergency room in the outpatient I mean there's there's endless places for palliative care right it's just a matter of sort of getting it out there. You know, um, I did never thought of this before, but um, when you start talking about palliative care, you know, even congestive heart failure patients who are struggling kind of with symptoms, of course, you treat them in a palliative care program, we are right? Often so they're not on, terminal. I mean, there are right. people who are going to live for quite some time, and right. But at right? the same time, Joe, it's those same sort of ill patients that right. you want to talk to them. What ifs? Right. We need to talk about the what ifs. We need to get the no elephant question. out of the room. Sure. What if your heart stops beating? Right. Would you want to be intubated? Right. Do you want to die in the hospital? Do you want to die at home? What are right. your wishes? Many times patients are afraid to talk or haven't been given the opportunity to talk right. about the what ifs. And we right. all have to talk about what ifs, no right? No question. And so that's the problem. If we're not talking about the what ifs, somebody may not want to be intubated. They may have an advanced directive or they may say, you know what, I don't want that machine, but they've never told anybody. Right. Then they have their heart attack. They come into the, emer the emergency room. They get into the ICU. They're intubated. They're mm. restrained. They have a peg. They have a respirator. Right. It's not what they wanted. It's not what they wanted. They wanted to be home and nobody, right. nobody, they never told anybody. Right. So we really want the what ifs to come out there, which is helpful with the new pulsed form, which well, we were just discussing. I mean, and think about that, because we're going to talk about end of life care in our next segment. But, but think about, you've got somebody who really didn't want this to happen, but they never told a family member. And now the family member is struggling with the decision on what do I do for, for this person. And that's it's a tough position to put people very difficult. In, we right? have, I have a patient at the moment who is actually in ICU, and, and the difficulty the son is having is, is removing the life support. Right. It's much harder to take it off than to sure. put it in the first place. And he, sure. he wishes he had spoken to his mother about right. what it is, right. and she is intubated. And now we have to talk about getting the, you know, the, the, it off. Sure. And that's even more difficult than... than sort of knowing what a patient wants. So you really help facilitate that discussion on we many different levels. We facilitate that right. discussion, especially it should be done in a, phys in a physician's office sure. way before somebody's terminally ill. Sure. We'll be right back with Dr. Reisner. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, Magnet award-winning nurses and accomplished hospital associates all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center. On the web at libertyhealth.org. 
Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. We're back with Dr. Reisner. Um, we were just talking about palliative care and some of the treatment options for patients who you're really trying to make more comfortable when they Correct. have a chronic disease. Um, we talked a little bit about the ICU and some of the things that you deal with there. Talk a little bit about when patients might have to go to hospice or you know, how helping, how do you help families cope with that situation? Well, when uh, somebody uh, has a terminal disease, and not only cancers that uh, are terminal, obviously, uh, there's congestive heart failure, end-stage lung disease, end-stage renal disease, somebody who's had a stroke. At that point, you, at some point in the trajectory of the illness, you decide that curative treatment is no longer helpful to this right. patient, and it's prolonging a suffering process and not making the quality of life the way it should be. Right. And really, you want to have um, somebody who is going to die. You don't want anyone to die, but people die. We sure. all die. You want it to be a good death. You want Most people want to die at home. Right. If you survey any geriatric population, most of them will say, I want to die at home. I sure. want to be surrounded by my loved ones. I want to be home. I want, don't want to be in pain. Right. And I want to be in control of, who, you know, of what I do. Sure. Most patients, unfortunately, are dying in hospitals. Right. And so we really do want to give a patient the opportunity of, of sort of having the death that they want and right. with dignity and respect. And so hospice really facilitates that. It's not about giving up. It's about making the last chapter of your life meaningful, right. pain-free, again, surrounded by people who can help you. So on a hospice team, you'll have your attending physician, of course. Sure. You have a hospice medical director who helps with the pain management, symptom control. You have hospice nurses who come into the home. You have a hospice social worker who helps family members cope with this chapter. Sure. You have a chaplain. You have aides. And so really it's about how, how to make this last chapter the most meaningful. You know, we have patients who haven't seen a child for a few years. This yeah. is the time they need to talk. Sure. This is the time they need to resolve conflicts. This is the time they need to get their affairs in order. Right. And that's what hospice does. And unfortunately, hospice is not given for enough, day, enough time. Right. Uh, patients are coming onto hospice and they die in three or four days. You really want a few, yeah. few months. Sure. Now, you talk about in your practice and with your nurse practitioners, really going out and reaching the families and really having a holistic approach. So obviously, you don't want to wait till somebody's going into hospice to have the discussion about you know, family members' right. wishes. How, how You try to approach that early on when you talk to your patients? Yes, yeah. we do. We have to talk to our patients. We have to talk to them about their advanced care planning, their sure. advanced directive, right. who is their health care proxy. If something happens to you, who would make decisions for right. you? Right. Uh, a new form that's been introduced into New Jersey called the POLST, Right. Uh, which you want to sit down and fill out, help fill out with the patient, which basically asks them their wishes, and that's transferable, so the patient keeps it with them okay. and allows it to go with the patient from their home to my office, to the nursing home, to the hospital, okay. and it just outlines the and patient's outlines wishes. And it outlines their wishes? Their wishes, and, and it's transferable do? from one place to another. Wow. So, so that same that form makes a big difference. makes a difference so sure. that the, the physician doesn't have to... Right. Restart, you know, it's and you're not putting it on a family member mm -hmm. who's got to make a decision that they're not sure what their family, what their family That's member wanted. That's probably the, the most wanted. important thing, and right. it's very difficult when there's a number of children, right? And they have may have different views, right? And so it is important for that person who right. is, uh, or all of us, to tell our children, "This is what I want. This is how I want to make decisions. Sure. Don't do this to me." We had a patient yesterday who did not want dialysis. Right. She does not want dialysis. Her husband